The National Broadcasting Company presents Lawrence Tibbet in a new series of transcribed programs featuring the golden voices of singing stars of the past and present with behind-the-scenes stories and facts as related by Mr. Tibbet. And here is our host, the great American baritone, Lawrence Tibbet. How do you do, everyone? And welcome once again to Golden Voices. You know... There's always a lot of talk about the blood and thunder action, the undisciplined, impulsive characters, and the general mayhem that make up the plot of so many opera stories. Actually, most of the operas we enjoy today are based on plots taken from novels, plays, poems, legends, historical events. Many of them acknowledged literary masterpieces before they ever became operatic librettos. Now think of the operas uh, based on the works of Shakespeare, Goethe, Schiller, Victor Hugo, Pushkin, to name only a few from a long list. And this is a good place to point out another fact, that a great number of authors have been saved from obscurity by an opera, and whose names survive only as long as the opera survives. For be that as it may, it seems to me quite natural for a composer to choose the plot which gives him the best opportunity to compose dramatic, descriptive music. After all, you'd be mighty bored if you watched a scene on the stage in which people were sitting in a restaurant eating their dinners quietly and with good manners, as they should. You must admit that, uh, well, for instance, Musetta, attracting attention and showing off at the Café Momus in Bohème, or Carmen prancing around the establishment of Lilas Pastures, is infinitely more diverting. But I'm digressing uh, by defending operatic blood and thunder... Because I'm going to play three very beautiful love duets, prosaic as far as opera goes, in that these love duets are not examples of seduction, adulterous love, or stimulated by love potions, but the believable, exalted kind of love, not to be associated with the sensational. The composer in each case is Verdi whose lyric genius was particularly inspired when he wrote music for scenes which required the touch of sincerity, the nobility of sentiment to make them live and breathe. Our first duet is between a husband and wife, Otello and Desdemona in Verdi's Otello. Otello has just returned from a war, safely and victorious. As the stars ascend the heavens, and they are finally alone. They speak of their love and the bliss of being reunited once more. You will hear the voices of Herr Benelli as Desdemona and Ramon Vinay as Otello from Toscanini's recording of Verdi's Otello.
You've just heard the first act duet from Verdi's Otello, sung by Herbanelli and Ramon Vinay. The theme of renunciation is not uncommon in opera, even when it concerns affairs of the heart. There are some pretty admirable characters who do observe the amenities of good deportment and make every effort to conform to the accepted standards of all good behavior. In Verdi's Mask Ball, Amelia... A married woman loves and is loved by Ricardo, a man not her husband. Although they know of each other's love, they've never spoken of it. Finally, the impetuous Ricardo asks nothing more than to hear from her own lips that this is so. In the ensuing duet, Ricardo's impatience and pleading is depicted in the staccato phrases of the music. And when Amelia finally admits her love, the strings in the orchestra burst out in a triumphant melody. Nevertheless, our two lovers realize the hopelessness of it all and determined to part from each other forever. You'll hear the voices of Maria Caniglia and Beniamino Gigli in the duet from the third act of Verdi's opera, The Masked Ball. <laughs>
Cornelia and Beniamino Gili in the third act duet from Verdi's opera, The Masked Ball. The words, till death do us part, occur in most all wedding ceremonies, as you know. And how often do lovers, young and old, repeat vows of eternal love beyond death and extravagantly assure each other that the greatest bliss would be to die together? Well, <laughs> in opera, this wish is fulfilled quite frequently. Again, in a Verdi opera, this time, Aida, just such an ecstatic and tragic ending occurs. The unfortunate Aida, in love with her father's enemy, helpless in her devotion towards her father and Radames, her lover, chooses death with Radames, rather than life without him. Giovanni Martinelli and Rosa Poncel, in the moving and very tender duet Verdi wrote for these lovers, finally joined together in death.
That was Martinelli and Rosa Poncel singing the love duet from the last act of Verdi's opera, Aida. We hope you've enjoyed the music of these love duets on today's program, and especially the immensity of Verdi's genius. May I cordially invite you to listen to our special Christmas program a week from today, which will feature golden voices in some rather unusual Christmas music. This is your host, Lawrence Tibbet, saying goodbye until we meet again next week. NBC has presented Lawrence Tibbet, transcribed in a program featuring the golden voices of singing stars of the past and present. Golden Voices will be heard again next week at this same time. We extend a cordial invitation to all of you to join Lawrence Tibbet next week for another interesting program of Golden Voices that have thrilled the world. This program, written by Geraldine Souvain, was directed by George Boutsas. <laughs>